Are you going to get me with the sword because MacArthur scored? I would, but I think it'd be helping the Leafs out more if I used it on Malkin. And then, yes, please, dude! What a great goal! Dude! Crazy throwing waffles. Woo! Who are you? Optimus Prime. Thank you for your patience in this last week and a bit. Let's get back to LFR. Leafs win 4-1 to over the Pittsburgh Penguins. Well, f Leafs lose 5-4 to in the shootout to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Now, hey, let's start at 2-0. Grubowski with both goals, a little bit of snipage mixed in there, but it should have been like 9-0. Shen missed on a couple point-blank chances. Lupel was robbed at some point. I think Kessel missed the puck. When it was 4-1 Leafs, the Penguins were lucky it was only 4-1 Leafs. And after Shen missed the second attempt, you even saw one of those priceless mouthing shots where he just goes, and the reason he said that, even though the Leafs had a 2-0 lead, if the Penguins score, it's 1. And with the tip in, that's exactly what Matt Cook does. But in the third, Tyler Bozak with the power play goal, and Grabo with the beautiful setup from MacArthur to make it 4-1. The Leafs have this, right? Well, someone the Leafs, specifically Jake Gardner, didn't have was Steve Sullivan. He breaks in on a breakaway, scores on Gustafson 4-2. And listen, I've loved Jake Gardner's game this season. I don't think he should have been benched nearly as many times as he has been. I can't believe he got sent down at that one point. Why was he not one of the young stars at the All-Star game? It's a crime, but this play blows a tire. Oh crap, that happens. When he's on the ice, he basically just goes Nyeh! and nudges the puck right to Steve Sullivan. We know what he was trying to do, but it's just a shame because he actually had the split second to reach around and swipe the puck the other way. And people rave about Gardner skating and his poise with the puck for his age. 99% of the time that's the case. This play. Ugh. Another thing the Leafs didn't have, Joe Vitale right in front of the net, and now it's 4-3. Why? Vitale was on a seven-game no-point streak and an 11-game no-goal streak. Who are you gonna call? Dinna Dana Dana Slump Busters! Now, okay, okay, things are falling apart, but just protect it. You got a little bit of the game left, let's do it. And with six seconds left, the puck bounces off Malkin's shoulder and in. Lately, Malkin has been scoring with any part of the body he wants to. And what's scary is that Malkin is the best player in the world right now, and when Crosby's healthy, the Pens will have the other best player in the world back. And the Leafs, with all sorts of chances to go up a cabillion to nothing in the first and second period, the game's 4-2, Chris Letang, huge save, just lift the puck a little bit, and now it's going to overtime. Kessel misses a golden chance, Gustafson makes a huge save, so we go to the shootout. Now, watching this many games, I catch myself contradicting myself in my head. Because when they sent out Kadri, I went, ah, great pick. And then I thought, oh, he's totally going backhand shelf. Those two thoughts imply very different things. Likely to score and predictable don't often mesh. That's Kadri's move. We've seen him use it many times before. Go look at the shootout at the very end of the season last year against the Bruins. March 30th through 31st. I was there. Malkin scores on Gustafson, but he's been ridiculous this season. And so it's up to Phil Kessel to tie it. Now, Phil Kessel's the greatest goal scorer on the Leafs. You'd think you'd use your greatest goal scorer in the shootout. But heading into this game, he was only one for five in the shootout, and I'm pretty sure the one he scored was either on his first or second attempt. He misses, Leafs lose. Now it's the shootout, it's a total crapshoot, and you can't blame the loss on Kessel because he didn't score in the shootout. But... Ronnie, I, he's one for six now. I think that's enough of a sample size to not use him next time. And the Leafs get a point. They sneak into a playoff spot for the time being, but wow. Remember like two weeks ago when the Penguins tricked everyone into thinking they weren't going to make the playoffs? That was cute. Yeah, it's going there, Pittsburgh. Yeah, a little scamps. And before I talk about the second half of the home and home, something I want to get off my chest. I don't remember the jockey, but I was listening to the radio last night during the game. Now, Tuesdays, often, I don't get to watch the game live. I PVR it. My friends and I go to the gym. We work out. I'm down 17 pounds since the end of November. Thanks for noticing. And then we go back to someone's place and we watch the game. But we like to listen to music on the way home. And the music Music's playing whatever song and like the second the song is done the song's probably not even done it's like an overlap it's tied up 4-4 in the igloo you dick the game's on the radio too if i wanted to know the score of the game i'd be listening to the game has that ever happened to you or don't you hate it or someone maybe called or texted or something that just ruined the game for you luckily we didn't hear the end of the game it wasn't ruined but with every goal the Leafs scored, we got more depressed because we knew what happened after. MacArthur scores! Yeah! Oh man, how'd they screw this up? It gets to like 15, then 10 seconds left, and we're like, you gotta be kidding me. So if you're a DJ on a music
music station, A, either don't do it at all, or B, leave a bit of a buffer or something like, oh, the Leafs are taking on the Penguins tonight so I can go ah, la, 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 la. If I'm not listening to sports radio, the only time I want to hear a Leaf mentioned is during 50 Mission Cap. Or on Dean Blundell. End Durant. The Leafs in a playoff spot, but barely, giving up a key point to the Pittsburgh Penguins, and now they have the second half of the home and home. Man, do they have to win this. And they could be getting some reinforcements. It looks like Colby Armstrong and newly re-signed John Michael Lyles might be ready to return to the lineup. And speaking of returning to the lineup, James Reimer's supposed to start. Allegedly, with Ron Wilson's track record, it could be UC Runas. At the time I'm shooting this, the starter wasn't announced officially yet, but forget who is or will be named whatever. Who should start tonight against the Penguins? I say Reimer because as good as Gustafson has been, and he's been fantastic lately, yeah. It's pretty unfair to Gustafson, but based on last season, I just trust Reimer more. And he's been off, but he needs the opportunity to get on. So there's your SteveDangle.com poll. You can vote on that on the front page of SteveDangle.com. Follow me on Twitter, like my page on Facebook, and blah, 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 a whole bunch of other stuff. I have Russian Facebook too. I should put that link in the underbar. And I will see you after the Leafs finish the home and home with the pens.